Okay, we're going to talk about how to use Constructor. And Constructor is our motor control layout program. And when you start off a new project, this is what you will see. This is the grid. And it's not like a, like a regular CAD program where you draw wherever you want. It's a grid where you lay your parts onto this grid and then connect up the wires and uh, connect the dots. Um, one of the first things I do is I move the power points over one. It makes room to put our rung numbers along here, along the side here. Okay. What I have shown here is I've got a help file, dynamic help running and changing. You can run things over and as you point at things the help file will change and update. Once you get comfortable with things you can turn that off. Now let's get going. Let's set up some of the options here, and we want to set the options. And go and put up the uh, environment options, okay? And for my classes, I want you to do connections with a dot, and no connections with a cross. So you'll want to select the dot for the connection, and a cross for no connection, okay? And here you can start with a new diagram every time you bring up the project or the last diagram you worked on. That's really ha helpful as you keep working on your work just to leave that set up. Okay? I would recommend leaving your auto save feature on and five minutes between saving. Okay? So we'll close that now that we have that set up. Then next option you can look at project options okay and we can permission settings there's a lot of things there we can uh, come back and change but for right now we can leave all of these with the uh, default settings okay now if you want to change your diagram size so you start working on it and it's just not quite big enough for you well let's change our diagram size here We'll go 20 columns wide, and you can see it, 50 rungs long. That's just fine there. Okay? Now, that's pretty much it for the options, although there is another option here, and we want to bring up, you've got, well, you've got the color, so you can change your font size and everything here. And this is where you would add a legend, okay? So if we add a legend, click on that, and you can look at these basic legends that are in there. Bring that up. And you can type your name and everything, and that will be down at the bottom of every page. Okay? When we come back to the environment option, I'd like you to click on colors. Okay? Now, this is the constructor traditional and for doing work and copying them into your lab reports, I would suggest going with the bright white. That gives you a white background which pastes real nice onto white paper and it also provides you with a maximum contrast for your diagrams. <clears throat> so there we go, we're good to go here. Now a few things you can look over here. Way over here in the far right hand is the currently selected symbol. That's what will be placed in wherever I click on a box. Okay? So I delete those. I'm right clicking on them. Pops up the menu. Okay? Now what I want to do is I come in here and I'm going to put the wrong numbers all along here. Okay? You can put the wrong numbers there. It doesn't show any numbers right now, but if you turn the simulation, turn the power on, you can see those are on. Okay? Now, again, click over here. This is your library items. I'm going to take this, expand it out. Okay, and we can keep going with this. And you can 
see that there's a large number of items in here. The library is quite a number of different components. Some of these components are identical. It's just for documentation purpose. There's different items like a 50 horsepower is no, motor is no different than a 100 horsepower motor as far as making your diagrams. Up here you have your contacts. You got switches and if you let your mouse hover over them for a little while it'll give you an informational bit about what group it belongs to, what it does. Here's a circuit breaker, here's a, a fuse, okay, and we can go along here. Now you've got your normally closed contacts, normally open contacts. Now your push buttons. You want to use these two push buttons, the green control heads. These two over here with the dotted lines in the top are auxiliary push buttons and when you push them they lock into place because they're meant to be operated by these control head push buttons. Okay. Now again your motors. There's an armature, DC motor armature. Okay. Here's some connections for delta Y motors if you're doing delta Y starting. We've got our indicator lights. Okay. Some more indicator lights different types of indicators, exit signs, light bulbs, horns, buzzers. The horns and buzzers you can have sounds when you're doing your simulation. Okay. Now we're coming here to our coils, two-wire relay coils. Two-wire relay coils. Now this says CR1, CR2, M1, M2. They're all the same. They just have some documentation differences on there. Here's a blank coil. Okay. Here's some timing relay coils. TR, TR1, TR2, TR3, TR4. And then control relays CR through CR4. Okay. You're going to have MS coil, MS1, MS2, 3, 4. Again, two wire relay coil. M, M1, M2, M3, M4. Now again, the differences are all the documentation I'll show you. You can use a, a simple coil like this for all of your purposes and do the labeling above the coil. Okay, they come down and we have more switches, limit switches here. You, now you've got your float switch, liquid switch, another one, pressure, okay, another pressure switch. Here's some temperature switches. Okay. Here's some flow switches, foot switches. Okay, You've got a vibration switch. Okay, and there's a simple toggle switches. Okay, now down here is a special contact for the overload. Okay, this is the contact you want to use if you have overloads on your diagram. Now right here we have one, two, three, four timing contacts. And when we're doing timing in my classes, these are the contacts you will use. Now you have timed open, time close. We will not be using these. These are the symbols we use in the class here. Okay. Now you have some other items. Now these items down here are inactive, which means you can't use them on the simulation portion, but you can use them on a diagram. Okay. So we already put the rungs over here. All right. Now let's start off with we're going to build the power path for our for our motor here. Okay? We come up here and we select some switches and we put our switches here. And we're going to come down a little bit farther and we're going to put some fuses there. Okay? Then what we want to do is put our contacts, normally open contacts. Now I'm going to skip a little bit. There they go. And then we want to find our overload heaters. Here they are right here. We'll put those in next. Okay. And we'll go and grab a motor. Now let's grab a 50 horsepower motor. Put that in there. Now I'm going to connect this and by clicking 
outside of this little box on a little wire, it will make a connection. Again, clicking on that wire there, there, and there makes a connection. Okay? Now, if we turn on simulation, I can close that and you can see the power. The power extends down to here. I can click on these contacts and close them and now that motor down there is, is all powered up and running. Okay, click on these contacts, open there. Now, now it'd be nice if I clicked on one switch they would all close together. So what I'm going to do is let's do some labeling. SW1, SW1, SW1. Fuse 1, 10 amp. Well, 10 amp is not going to be quite sufficient for a 50 horsepower motor, obviously. And but we'll just leave that for right now. 10 amp, okay? Now, don't label these contacts, and I'll show you why later, okay? And we'll label these OL1, OL2, OL3, okay? Now, we come in here, we've got everything all set up, we want to do our our control wiring. Okay? Can click on here. Do some wiring. Okay? Now I want to stick a fuse in here. And I'm going to come over here. Click over here and get some wiring, get some get the other line. Now notice I've got a short circuit there. Click it to remove the short. Click it to remove the short. Or on the other way, if you want a connection, click it, make a connection. But for right now, we're going to make sure we don't have that there. Now I went one line too long right here, and I want to delete that wire, so right click on it to delete it. And I have the fuses selected, some of them go there. Okay? Now, come down here. So, now oh, wait a minute. Let's go back up this way. And put one down there. And come across here. I'm going to get rid of this because it's in my way right now. I'm going to come over to this spot right here. Right click. Fill left with wire. Put one down here. Now I'm going to come down here to the bottom. Right click fill up with wire, right click, oh, get right on that wire, fill up with wire. So there we go. Okay, it's a little funky, and uh, but it's all there. I don't like this area right over here. Could work on that, make it come straight across and then down, but we'll leave that for right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and get them some rung numbers again and put those in there so we can have our duplicate rung numbers in different places. Now, let's again bring our library symbol up and let's, I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. Move it over so it's not quite in the way. Now I want a uh, push button. Okay, remember we want to use the green push button, so I'm going to put push button there, normally closed, normally open. And then I'm going to come down here, I'm going to get a coil. Let's find us a coil. Okay. And keep on going, I'm going to find those overload contacts somewhere. There we go. There's the contacts. Now we need a set of holding contacts in there. So we'll put that there. Connect them up. Now let's label everything. There we go. Stop. Start. 
let's go to motor starter one and those contacts are overload now I don't want to type motor starter one in here because what we need to do is tell the computer that these contacts belong to that coil these contacts over here belong to this coil so before I type anything here I'm going to right click on it and select assignment and select it to the coil that's there okay standard relay coil MS1 you can see now that they're connected together assignment wise let's do the same thing over here assignment MS1 assignment MS1 again assignment select MS1 we're good now the other thing are these switches you notice I had to go and close each switch one at a time real life they all close at the same time so what we're going to do is assign to a switch group SW1 and this one over here we're going to assign to a switch group SW1 now you see they're all tied together so let's go up here and look at the simulation okay I can close this they all close now you see we have power everywhere here now I'll push the start button energize the coil these contacts close these contacts close and our motor is running hit the stop button okay everything stops hit the start and we trip the overload okay now let's do this one more thing I need to right click and we're put to a switch group which is overload now they're all set if you come along here and you trip this those should open up okay and we do the same thing assign to a switch group assign to a switch group okay there we go there see when these open up that opens up now on the switch group it does not identify it so we need to come up here and type OLS for all the overloads there we go this is our basic diagram and there's one more thing to add and that's the coil cross-reference that's this symbol right here okay give you a relay contact location we'll click that now what that will do we turn this on it tells us that we have normally open contacts on 4, 5, 5, and 5 so here's the one on rung 4 and if you look at this these are on 4.5 so they round those up to 5 and that's how you read these if there's an underscore underneath of it that would be a normally closed contact so let's go put one on there right there and let's go put a light bulb on there okay there we go assign this to there now let's go try it okay now you see we have another one and in this case on rung 5 we also have a normally closed contact okay turn the power on the bulb lights up start it stop it turn it off and there we go